is a 68 year old female. I present with severe abdominal pain when eating with significant weight loss. The pre-op CT scan, and we'll show this a little bit later, uh, showed uh, extensive SMA disease. Uh, very difficult to determine whether it was occluded or whether it was uh, highly stenotic. Here you can see the eorogram, which shows reconstitution of the distal SMA via collaterals, but there's no obvious and direct communication. Uh, this is an aptus sheath, in which we inserted. Again, tips are always put that much higher than you think. It really shortens up as you create the, uh, the curve on the end of the aptus sheath. And here we're actually bending it. I think the new name for this is actually tour guide rather than aptus sheath. Although it was originally introduced for use basically with the aptus uh, tax. And now we're shaping this towards what we think is the origin of the sperm is in Turicotti. You can see that long piece of calcification is actually calcification in the sperm is in Turicotti. I'm going to try and show you the value of image fusion. Uh, we made multiple attempts basically at freehanding this. And uh, really, uh, in each case, we've edited out a lot of this um, for content purposes. We never really could uh, identify or engage uh, the, or the orifice really, really at all well. Here, here was probably our, our best shot. So through the tour guide is a burn and a glide wire. And again, it just kept deflecting off the anterior wall um, of the aorta. Uh, so we had made multiple attempts um, in doing this. Uh, at this point, the patient was also awake and really was not having a hard time as he holding her breath so we could get good shots. So we made the decision that we were going to put her to sleep and we're going to go ahead and create uh, image fusion. Image fusion is done, uh, in this case, it was by doing biplanar fusion. We would take uh, two um, views, uh, plural views, ideally about 90 degrees apart, and that allows us to import the CT scan, and we'll show you the CT scan. This is just an example of how everything just keeps deflecting off the anterior wall. We never really uh, could actually engage it. So we really should have done this complete, right at the beginning of the case. Uh, now you can see the uh, calcification in the, in the CT scan. Uh, again, when looking at it, we, we did think preoperatively there was a tiny channel, that tiny little channel you can see going down there. We never really could elucidate this uh, via angiography. Uh, there was a good IMA, and the IMA uh, via meandering artery would fill the sperm as in toric artery. So what we're doing now in the CT scan is just spending the time trying to mark in what that tiny little orifice is. Um, so you, you do that by, by drawing a circle around the orifice and then you try to draw a center line which gives you the trajectory of the superimus and turricori. And if we can get the fusion right, uh, then we can lay the tour guide right up against the, the origin of the superimus and turricori. And when you insert a wire, it should follow that. Um, uh, the, 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 the direction should go right down it since it's the middle of the superimus and turricori. And there's always a little bit of deformity from these devices because the CAT scan, of course, is done with no devices in there. And you can see when we did this, you line the circle up on the end of the tour guide with the circle. Both of these really should look like lines if you get the orientation properly. And essentially, the first time the wire went right on down through it. And of course, the next step is actually to confirm that that wire is truly endoluminal. And what you do at this point in time, you can see the way that we use this is uh, on the, the fluoro scheme, we are fading in and out the CT overlay, and you continually check off by looking at these different um, images uh, so that you know what the orientation of that wire should be, and you know you got a pretty good idea that the wire is, is, is in the lumen. So we then crossed the lesion with the catheter, we injected it, tiny little spear mesentericordi. This only measured about four millimeters in diameter. Uh, we confirmed this also with an AP view, so we're pretty confident uh, that we're in the lumen. We then placed the rosin wire down into the distal branch of the spermis and turicori. Uh, we had sized this up. plan was to use a, a 5 millimeter by 29 millimeter VBX. These track really nicely, even through a highly stenotic lesion like this. Obviously, we're going to have to project this into the aorta. A lot of this disease is at the origin of the aorta. You want it 2 or 3 millimeters into the aorta. Um, so we went ahead and were happy with this and we inflated uh, the VBX. It really inflated uh, pretty nicely, so we're pretty happy um, with the way that this uh, came up. Now here you see the, the 
VBX being brought up in a position. Again, we almost we manage the sheath much like we do with the fenestrated grabs as the balloon comes down, a little bit of forward pressure on the sheath. The sheath goes back inside the VBX, helps protect the VBX and the balloon. Now what we've got to define, and you can see we're injecting here, and it really doesn't go down into the distal spermas and tricordic. So we've not completely covered. What we want to do now is to define the first branch of the spermas and tricordic, so we're going to replace our catheter and um, the catheter is placed more or less in the distal spermas and turricori because we've got to define the distal extent of the next stent without sacrificing ideally any of the collaterals or the branches to the, um, uh, the, the distribution of the spermas and turricori. So that's essentially what we're trying to identify here. We shot multiple different views. Of course, we also do look at the CAT scan, but it's a little bit unreliable depending on the fusion because there's a stiff wire down there which tends to deform the small branches in the distal spermas and tericordial circulation. So we're going to bring up another, uh, it was a 5 by 29 uh, VBX that we're going to bring up into position, and we're going to try and land cover the stenosis without covering any of the, these distal branches. And so that's really what we're trying to define where that first branch is. So having identified that, you can see um, where the wire is in the main uh, component of the SMA, where that branch is. Now we're going to bring the second VBX up. Again, tracks nicely through the first one. It's all about positioning the distal end of that. We don't really care how much overlap there is. Make sure you use stents that are long enough so that you, know, you don't have to be on the third stent to bridge a gap between these two. And again, we're reasonably confident. You can see the fusion mark that we've got up there, but we're also looking at the angiography. And then we're going to bring the second VBX up into position. So VBX has been deployed. Delivery system's been removed. Rosen wire's a pretty safe wire because that little curly cue on the end of it. And then we're going to go ahead and shoot the completion angiogram and it's wide open. Uh, so now we're going to take all these devices out. We all patient, put the patient in Plavix. This patient's symptoms were completely resolved uh, by the next morning. She'd had multiple meals. Thank you.